Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Update for March 10th, 2013. Before we get going, please keep in mind that this presentation is for educational purposes only, and we are not financial advisors, nor are we broker-dealers. Any trades and or results covered in this presentation may or may not be live. Any hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be presented as accurately as possible. However, since some of them may not have been uh, live executed, the results may vary. And also the risk of loss in trading securities and options can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. All right, I'm just going to jump into things here because I had a very, very busy week this week. We have a lot of March trades on, and we're coming right up on expiration. And we've had some decent-sized market movements, so it's been keeping us busy. First, let's take a quick look at the markets. They continue to surprise me. This move to all-time highs was expected on the Dow, and I did expect a turnaround. The market is definitely overextended, but the buyers just keep pouring in and pouring in. So we are uh, on a parabolic move up right now, and it's a, it's a sustained move, especially after this very large one we had. I guess it's not too surprising on the Dow. We did have some consolidation for a while, but the Russell has just been crazy. So we got this uh, sustained move up. If we're looking at shorter term profit targets, let's see here where this is going to go maybe. Uh, I believe we are very overbought. However, the charts are the charts, and let's just kind of see if they're telling us anything, see if we can set some price targets here. So we kind of have this uh, broadening pattern thing happening here. Well, we have something like this going on here. We had a nice uh, broadening pattern in, in the Dow. If you take your measurements on your broadening pattern and measure the breakout, that tells us the Dow is probably going to around 14.5. So it has about another 103 points to run to hit its profit target. Is it going to go there? I don't know. I mean, we're overextended, and as far as I'm concerned, the market's irrational, and the buyers is just a runaway market right now. It can turn at any time, but we do. Uh, if it's going to uh, run much higher, 14.5, it's probably going to run out of steam. So that's what we're setting for a target here on the Dow. If you look at the NDX, the NDX has just been kind of sideways, even with this... Uh, decent size up move this week. We did break out of a consolidation. So if you wanted to set a target for this consolidation here, we'd be looking at, let's see, I'd call it uh, NDX 2830 for a top on NDX if it continues to rise with everything else. And everything else, it's assuming everything else uh, continues its irrational climb here. And let's just look at the SPX before we look at the Russell. We have a nice, clear head and shoulders uh, breakout here on our short-term charts. If we, uh, if we run our, our lines here, we have from 18, uh, 1485 to 1525. Let's see, that's going to come out to uh, 1560. So this uh, has a target of 1560 short-term. And Russell, let's take a look here. We had, another, we had a nice head and shoulders uh, pattern here. On the Russell, 915 to 985, that's 30 points. That puts us to 945 for a short-term target. If you're hit, if you're if you're um, analyzing off this short-term pattern here, we got a 945 target, which comes in pretty nicely with this trend line. So that's probably a decent resistance. If you're taking targets off this cup and handle, well, it's a different story. This cup and handle price target is going to be 930 to uh, 975. So that puts us at 975 for price target, which I don't think we're going there. That would be too high. I would be more tenant to work it off this smaller price target here. Uh, 945 will probably be topped out and do some sideways. However, like I said, that's assuming the market keeps on this irrational run up. Could pull back at any time, but there are some high side price targets for you. We'll see if the uh, market continues or if it finally settles into a sideways range here. Okay, let's take a look at our trades. The first thing I'd like to look at here, let's do the simple stuff first. V Condor in April. All I did here is I came in here and I rolled, I had a call at 940, I had a put at 8, I'm sorry, at 920. If we look in here, we had a put at 920, 
and the call was at 940, if you remember from last week. All I did is I rolled the call higher because, uh, you know, as I was saying, I expected the market to kind of start to range sideways here a little bit. And I just wanted to pull some, um, uh, put that call forward to raise my expiration line a little bit. And when I did the call, I did the put also. I rolled that from uh, 920 down to 890. And all that did is raise up our V a little bit. With the move, I would have been better off staying where I was. However, like I said, I was not expecting this move. Everything's fine. This is still running a profit of around 1195. If we come to our V Condor in March, I was basically kind of doing the same thing here. I was taking the call, let's see, on Tuesday. Look at our T log here. On Tuesday, I took this. 920 call I roll it up to 940 because I didn't think the market was going any higher and I wanted to just uh, pick a little more uh, theta into the trade and then on Wednesday when we had the large up move I thought that was an opportunity to take the money on the call so I sold the call off uh, also it was pretty obvious we weren't going to be needing this put so I sold that put off just to kill out, collect some more money out of it and it looked really nice and of course we had that continued move on Thursday and then again on Friday so it started pushing the upside of the trade and I ended up pulling off five of these uh, 960 calls the position currently looks like this let's go to the analyze graph it's just a straight condor and I pulled off some of these calls which is why we have this little V in the graph here uh, and that's the position as long as we stay under if we stop going up, we're just going to expire this. And like I said, if if I was if I was really concerned about this, I could just pull this whole side, I just pull the whole all the shorts off and not worry about it. But I'm just going to eke as much out of this as I can. And right now we're up about uh, 36.49. We should expire it right around that area. Uh, let's see here. Let's go into the March Rock trade. Being right up on expiration, we had to do some moving and grooving here with this thing. Right now we're still slightly up, and let's see here. On Tuesday, we came in here, and you may see some mistakes in the T-log. I had a lot of positions I was moving around on Tuesday, and I made some execution mistakes. So, you know, for example, I may have bought a butterfly with the wrong wings if you're analyzing this and I had to come in and, and move stuff around or whatever and that may be on any of these other trades because like I said I had a lot going on and there were some execution where I bought the wrong options I had to go in and um, back out of some and come in but everything's in here so uh, mistakes and all so on Tuesday what we did is we bought five 950 butterflies and actually, I can kind of just go through here and check to analyze every day so you know what we're looking at. We'll show you what we looked like on Monday. This is what we looked like on Monday. Everything was looking really nice. You know, had them, if the market was somewhat reasonable to settle down, this would have been a really, really nice trade here. Uh, but we come in on Tuesday and we get that rise in the markets. And I ended up buying five 950 butterflies. And you can see we're just starting to lift the side of the graph here as the market starts to come up. And uh, on Wednesday, I came in, I bought another two into the, I bought another two 950 butterflies. I bought one here, I probably bought one after a little bit later. So let's just go to the end of the day between 4.30 and uh, uh, 3.30 and 4. So I come in here, I bought another one of these, a couple of these 950s. And the position looks like this. Still looking okay, but it is taking a profit and a loss hit with the continued move. On Thursday, if we come in here, I came in, I bought another 950 just to fill out our 950s. And the position looks like this. Again, if the market had you know settled at all, this would be looking really nice by now. However, the market did not settle, it kept on going. And on Friday, I ended up selling all of our 890 butterflies out. I took all the 890 butterflies and they're gone. And with a continued further up move, I actually, it was time to start buying the 970 butterflies, 
we didn't have any time premium in, in those. So what I did instead is I bought a couple of verticals, which is going to accomplish the same delta thing as if I bought the 970s. But like I said, I don't want to sell premium for 10 cents. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to go ahead, assuming the market keeps going up this week, I'll go ahead and wait till these are worth some money and then I'll sell them off up there. But for right now, here's our position. We have 10 930 butterflies, we have 10 950s, we have two 920, 940 calls. We're pretty much at break even right now. Realistically, if the market settles at all on Monday, this is what our line's supposed to look like. Let's see, on Monday, this is a Friday, so Monday would be a T plus three. And Monday, this could be up near 5,000. If it is, uh, by Monday afternoon, if we kind of are stable Monday and we can pull something like that out of this, I'm just going to probably close that because I just have too much going on at expiration. It's, it's getting to be too much to watch. So that's the March rock trade. Not really a problem. It's just been um, just a lot of moves because the market's been moving a lot. Let's come in here and look at the March M3. This trade is the only one we happen to be down on this month. So um, let's just go back to Monday for a second. Back on Monday, this didn't look bad. We we're looking pretty nice here. We're kind of under the 10. All we needed for the market to stop a little bit or uh, hang around. Of course, Tuesday, the market takes off like crazy. So we have to come in here. And all I did to start with is I made a minor adjustment. I, all I did is I, I did a, um, an 890, call vertical just to put my our Vega negative. So it was just a, a very minor adjustment. And I was just going to wait and see what the market did. And if the market kind of pulled down a little bit, we'd be good again. But, uh, of course, on Wednesday, the market did not retrace at all. So I have a decision to make. If I come back on Monday morning here, Wednesday morning, this is where, sit, where we're sitting Wednesday morning. I have a decision to make. Do I want to just um, call it a loss here and flatten out my expiration line and take a very small loss if the market sits? and see if it comes back to, for me, or do I want to stay on top of it? And I decided to uh, stay on top of it, see if we could do it, because I thought the market was so overextended. Just think if we could uh, come up on top of the price here, then we'd be doing pretty good. So I sold off the butterflies way back here at 870, and I bought five all the way up at 930. And then from there, I did some, I sold off some call verticals because I was too positive delta. Guess we should have kept going because the market kept going up. But let's take a look here at the end of the day. Let's see what the position looks like. And here's kind of what we're looking like at the end of the day. Looking nice again. All we need is for the market to calm down a little bit. And I was thinking we may settle sideways a couple days here at this peak. It wasn't, you know, like I said, every time the market pulls back, we've been having a U, and it's been coming back up. So um, not a surprise that we came back and retested these highs, uh, you know, with where we were. And I more or less expected that, you know, test the 930 area, and then probably back into here. I figured it would look uh, work out pretty nice. We all know that did not happen, and the market continued higher. So Thursday, I started selling off these. 890 butterflies. By the end of the day, I just sold one off, which was um, right here. Actually, yes, yeah, so you see, I sold one of these off. And here's what our graph looked like coming into the end of the day on Thursday. And uh, Friday, we had the gap up and it ran. So, what we ended up doing Friday is I sold that uh, another 890 butterfly. And then I came in, I bought a 950 butterfly, and I put some 939 for 40 verticals in. I will show you the T-log. Again, you may see some mistakes in here, so don't be surprised. I don't even remember which trades I, I made some errors on, but I know there's a couple because I had a lot, like I said, I had a lot going on. And, I, and these aren't the only trades I have happening. I have uh, other ones as well. So there you go, you'll let you take a look at that. That's what happened there. And at the end of the day, uh, let's say on Friday, here's what we look like on Friday. Let me get my T-log up here. You can see the moves we made on Friday. 
this is a position coming into the close or actually at 1600 the market makers started pricing stuff weird right at the end of the day so if uh if the market doesn't go up on monday which you know we'll see what happens the futures are already uh they were negative and they're already pushing some positives so uh if it doesn't go up on monday then we could certainly come in here maybe take a break even and i'd be happy with that and if we don't we'll more than likely just a little loss here we'll continue to just play with this if we get a really really harsh up move i may end up taking something uh bigger than i initially wanted to but uh like i said max loss is 5000 that's way down here to actually hit this we'd have to be you know up in the uh, 960 range i don't think that's going to happen i think we might go to 945 and back down but we've been wrong before so that is where we're sitting on the m3 trade for march if we look at the April bearish butterfly, we are down on the April bearish butterfly, but I love this trade right now. I just really, really love it. Here, we're sitting here. We're down 3,500, which is less than, uh, much less than one third to maximum loss. We are two thirds scaled into the trade. Like I said, the market is just way, way overextended, and I'm really liking this. Uh, we'll have to see where it goes. It'll be really nice if we don't exceed. 950 and have to do that roll and we just kind of back down into here for a little while that would be would would be a really nice month probably for this and as far as the march bearish butterfly this here again we've been playing with this it was up to low profit target on monday i was actually snowmobile on monday so it was my my one day off and i'm glad i took it because the um the rest of the week was nuts here so if you look at this trade on, let's come back to Monday afternoon. Here we are. We're past our, our low profit target here. Trade's looking really nice. Again, if we just had a couple days of settlement, it would be nice. Tuesday comes in, large up move, and it just knocks our profit to about in half, which you know is not unusual for a move like that. So we add in the 10 940s as in our expiration rules to keep our delta under control. We come into Wednesday, and with a continued up move, we start peeling off these uh, these 900s down here. I took three of them away, and this is what our position looks like. It's looking nice. We go to Thursday, and I pull off the remaining 900 butterflies. It must have been right at the end of the day here. Okay, we pull off the remaining 900 butterflies. This is what our position looks like. like again, everything's fine won't take much just need a day of settlement here and on a friday we got a continued up move and i ended up putting on 10 960s the position still about 2000 all we need is, a, is the market to uh, uh, in theory the market settles we should be able to hit a low profit target as early as uh monday if uh if the market's crazy or if the market makers don't let up on the pricing tuesday should be our day and of course if this goes too far we'll just close it out at a small loss but i do believe that we'll be able to hit a little profit target on this still i might even might even hold it a little bit longer but we shall see uh and that is all our positions so well, i wouldn't be surprised to see a continued up even though we're overextended to the upside and uh because we do have some higher price targets the market is very likely to flatten out shortly we shall see. I'll keep you updated with the positions. Again, bear with me. Um, the website's not going to be updated right away because we have too many trades going on right now that we're monitoring, and I just I just don't have time to do it. So um, I will update at least on Wednesday, and of course we'll go over everything on, on next weekend's update to let you see how things turned out. If I do have the time, I will update them. Uh, you know, as things happen. If you can see the bearish butterfly and M3 updates on the virtual trading floor, SMB, if you're a member of the options tribe, because those get updated immediately or within uh, usually within 20 minutes of uh, any adjustment. All right, that's it. I'll keep you updated with any changes. Thank you, and have a great week. Good night.